Here's our next basic shape. It's called the octahedral molecule. An octahedral means eight sides. And so what you have here, and I don't know if you can see it, but uh, notice we have a central atom right here. And in this case, we have an example. We have sulfur hexafluoride. So the six fluorine atoms, there is a one sulfur atom. Why is the sulfur in the middle and the fluorine at the end? Well, because sulfur is a lower electronegativity, so that would become the central atom. These would become the appendages or the terminal atoms. And of course, for the VSEPR, the valence uh, shell electron pair repulsion concept, we have one central atom and six terminal atoms forming that molecule. And notice then that the top portion of it, that's the bottom is hidden by my hand here, but the top portion forms a pyramid and it would have four sides. So just like the pyramids in Egypt, four-sided pyramids. And then of course at the bottom, you would also have a four-sided pyramid. So basically two four-sided pyramids glued together at the base, uh, pointing away from one another. Uh, this is something most kids uh, no, and of course most of us older folks remember from our younger days, this is a jack, used to play with those, but notice that is a perfect example of one of those octahedral shapes. You know, if you consider these the four molecules in the plane, they have one molecule sticking up, one molecule sticking down. So there's another perfect example of what an octahedral molecule would look like in real life. Here's another way of representing it. You have all the four molecules on a central plane, one sticking straight up, one sticking straight down. Of course, if you didn't have that, if you had, for example, a planar molecule, the angles between the bond uh, electrons would only be 60 degrees, which is not acceptable. There would be too much repulsive forces. And so they resettle themselves in such a way that they're as far away from one another as possible. In this particular shape, you can see that every angle between every bond is 90 degrees. So it's 90 degrees in the plane, it's 90 degrees from the plane to the vertical up and the vertical down. So that would be the best, least energy intensive, so to speak, way, or I should say the lowest energy state this molecule can take by having the farthest distance away from the electrons that are, that are occupied in the bonds between the sulfur and the fluorine. So that's what we call an octahedral molecule. So these are the basic shapes that we've gone through so far. Now what we're going to do next is look at these basic shapes and see how they might change when some of these are replaced by free electron pairs. We haven't looked at those yet except for the water molecule and that does change things a little bit. Bond angles will change a little bit. Repulsive force is a little bit different between the free electrons versus the, the electrons uh, used in the bonds and so therefore you'll see some adjustment to the shapes and we'll see that in the next several videos.